What is central venous pressure or CVP? Central venous pressure is used to assess the fluid status of patients in critical care settings. The doctor will insert a central line to monitor the central venous pressure. Central line is a catheter that is made of polyvinyl chloride. It is very soft and flexible tube. The central line could also be used to administer medication or fluids. That is why it comes in two lumens, three lumens, or four lumens. CVP monitoring helps to assess cardiac function, evaluate venous return to the heart, and indirectly gauge how well the heart is pumping. The central venous catheter also provides access to a large vessel to a rapid, high-volume fluid administration and allows frequent blood withdrawal for laboratory samples. CVP monitoring can be done intermittently or continuously. The catheter is inserted percutaneously or using a cut-down method. Central venous pressure is a reflection of the pressure in the right side of the heart. It is the blood pressure in the vena cava near the right atrium of the heart. CVP reflects the amount of blood returning to the heart and the ability of the heart to pump the blood back into the arterial system. It can be used as an estimation of preload and right atrial pressure. Central venous pressure is often used as an assessment of hemodynamic status, particularly in the intensive care unit. It is influenced by blood volume, vascular tone, heart rate, and ventricular contractility. CVP falls in association with hypovolemia, and rises if there is an increase in circulating volume. Hypotension can be treated with volume support until CVP approaches maximum. Exceeding normal CVP values has the potential to cause pulmonary and tissue edema. The CVP normal value is 2 to 6 millimercury. How it is done? The physician will insert a central line in one of the veins. It can be in subclavian vein, internal jugular vein, femoral vein, or anticubital vein. Patient may be placed on Trendelenburg position during insertion to make the vein more prominent, facilitating line placement. The procedure is sterile, so the nurse will prepare the pressurized saline bag and transducer. The nurse will assist the doctor during the insertion of the central line. The physician will apply topical anesthetic to insertion site, then use a needle and syringe with negative pressure to access the subclavian or internal jugular vein. Next, the physician will insert a guide wire through the needle, remove the needle, then insert a dilator over the guide wire. Then, the physician will remove the dilator and insert the central venous catheter over the guide wire. Then the guide wire is removed. Sterile technique is used during the insertion procedure. The physician and nurse should be wearing sterile gowns and masks. The physician must wear sterile gloves while working with the catheter. The patient will be draped with a sterile field by the physician. During insertion, it is the responsibility of the nurse to monitor the patient's tolerance of the procedure and assess for any complications like dyspnea or difficulty of breathing tachycardia or fast heart rate, or dysrhythmias or abnormal heart rhythm. Difficulty of breathing is possibly due to pulmonary embolism or pneumothorax.
tachycardia is possibly due to stress or hypovolemia. Dysrhythmia is possibly due to the catheter placement that irritates the heart. After the insertion of central line, the doctor will then order an x-ray. This is to assess the placement of the catheter or to check for pneumothorax. CVP waveform interpretation. CVP waveform has three positive deflections called A, C, and V waves correspond to specific atrial events. A wave reflects atrial contraction and flows the P wave seen on the EKG. C wave reflects the bulging of the closed tricuspid valve into the right atrium during the ventricular contraction corresponds to the QRS T interval on the AKG. V wave represents atrial filling and increased pressure against the closed tricuspid valve in early diastole. What does it mean if the CVP is low? It means that the patient's amount of blood returning to the heart is low or there is a problem in the vascular tone heart rate or ventricular contractility. What does it mean if the CVP is high? It means that the patient's amount of blood returning to the heart is high, there is fluid overload, or there is a problem in the vascular tone, heart rate, or ventricular contractility. CVP maintenance. Number one, monitor tubing for clots or air bubbles dumped waveform and security of tubing connections number two document the waveform once per shift number three draw blood using stopcock a transducer or nearest to the patient number four notify the physician for abnormal cvp readings number five change pressure tubing every 72 hours and label with date and time number six Use normal saline for flush system. Number 7. Record the CVP reading on the flow sheet every 4 hours and if necessary. Number 8. Level, calibrate, and zero the system every 4 hours and if necessary. Level at the plevostatic axis. Number 9. Verify waveform and record CVP strip from monitor every shift. Number 10. Observe mean pressure of the waveform at end of expiration. Potential complications during insertion, tension pneumothorax, bleeding, fragmented catheter, thromboembolism, air embolism, hemothorax, ventricular arrhythmia, and hematoma. During maintenance, infection, clotted ports, and hematoma. Troubleshooting, high CVP readings, check for occlusion or turned stopcock, normal for mechanical ventilation and COPD, over infusion of IV fluids, poor contractility of right ventricle, coughing, volume overload cardiac tamponade, PE, pulmonary hypertension, and zero level is too low. Low CVP readings, loose or disconnected tubing, third spacing, sepsis, shock, vasodilating medications, volume depletion, level too high. Discontinuing central IV line, number one, Use aseptic technique. Number two, remove all dressing. Number three, cleanse site with antimicrobial swab. Number four, using sterile 4x4 four four gauze, pull the catheter and hold direct pressure over the site until bleeding stops. Number five, redress with sterile 4x4 four four and clear dressing for easy site assessment. Number six, Leave the dressing in place for at least 24 hours. Number 7. Assess next 30 minutes after removal. 
That's all for today's video. Thank you for watching. If you are new to my channel, press subscribe in my YouTube channel. Follow me in Facebook. Press the notification button to be notified with my upcoming videos. Thank you for your support.